Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure we can kind of see both of them, is when I change the blend mode for the group, when I change this to multiply, it looks very different. Okay, and let's just uh, use the move tool so we can scoot this over. I don't know that I want them overlapping, but we'll zoom out a little. All right, so you can see each one here, it's like a cumulative effect where each one is blending with the layers below it. When you change the blend mode for a layer group, what happens is it, Photoshop kind of pretends like all the layers within that group are merged together, and then it applies the effect. All right, and we can see this as well. It's the same behavior. If we go back to Bridge and let's see, if we look at styles for a minute. Okay, so here I've got the same kind of setup, right? I've got a group on top and we have a group on the bottom. So I'm going to go to the group on top. Now, when you add a layer style, which is your drop shadows and your strokes and all of that, you can do that by just clicking on the FX icon right here and we'll go to stroke. And let's say I want a, yeah, there's a one pixel. Well, let's make it thicker so we can be sure we see it. And you guys know, right, like if you set up your stroke, because I like my stroke usually to be on the inside. It's not really going to work on this file, but a lot of times if, if I'm just trying to put a key line around a frame, I want it on the inside. If it's rectangular, put the stroke on the inside so that you get the, the um, square edges. Otherwise, you get rounded edges. Well, I guess it depends on what you want, rounded or just know that inside gives you square, outside gives you rounded. All right, so let's go back to outside. We see we've got this nice stroke here, and we'll also add like a drop shadow. And we know that we can scoot around that drop shadow by just dragging in the image area. But what I want to do is I want to make sure it overlaps this circle right here. Okay, so we click OK. So I've applied that shape to one layer. The easiest way to go ahead and apply it to other ones, I can drag it down there, and I can hold down the Option key to move it, just like we were moving the layer mask a minute ago. But I can also right mouse click and just say, can I copy that layer style? And that way, if I have a bunch of different layers here, then I can just paste the layer style to all of those layers at once. So what's important to see here is that, again, there is a layer stacking order, right? This shape is on top, and it is casting the shadow on the shape below it, and the stroke is on top. So it looks like that circle is on top, or that ring is on top. It's very different from if I go to the group one copy, and I right mouse click and I say, could you please, see how polite I am to Photoshop? See, I love Photoshop. Paste the layer style. Look what happens now. It's as if those layers inside that group are all merged together and then the styles applied at once. All right, so keep that in mind when you're doing things um, because this does get really handy, especially if you're working with something like, like an image like this. Okay, that's fine. It's going to, um, it's just got to substitute a font, which is no big deal. So you can see here, I have all of the clothing in a layer group. So there's the three layers of clothing, and there they are in the group. So if I wanted to add a drop shadow to this, we can do that really quite easily, right? Because they're all in the same group. I'll just come down to drop shadow, and sure enough, we can move that drop shadow, and we can change the size and do all those things, but it's going to add it to anything that's in that group. So if I were to take something out of the group, right, if I take this layer and bring it out of the group, well, some other things are going to happen too. I'll have to hide that layer. But you can see that that shirt, no, or that blouse, I guess, no longer has a drop shadow associated. But if I put this back in, and we toggle that on, and we clip it again like it was, then we can see that it automatically gets the drop shadow. So anything that I put into that group will automatically get that drop shadow applied to it.